Yes, indeed. Big Brother Bear here to give you all that you want and what you need. Today, I'm going to give you four things that I did not like about playing junior college basketball. Not only will I give you four things that I didn't like about playing junior college basketball, but, it's a, but I'll also tell you ways you can kind of get around those things so you don't have to go through the same pain that I went through when I went through it. Hoop loud, you. So if you didn't know, my first chance at college basketball happened at CEU in Price, Utah, Highway 7, College of Eastern Utah. It's called Utah State University Eastern. Now, that was my first opportunity to play in college and really my only legitimate one. The only time, I, the only reason I really got that opportunity is because I had a person that played college basketball, that went to my high school, that went to this JUCO, that did really well, that went on to a Division I school. And they gave me a shot. They said, hey, you want you want a shot? I, I registered my first year, walked on, paid my own way, did a really good job. And um, every year after that, I got it paid for. You know, And that's a lot coming from somebody that wasn't picked to, to graduate high school. That's a lot coming from someone that failed the sixth grade and the eighth grade, special education classes, undersized, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, played the forward position. Um, that's a lot coming from me. So uh, it, was, it was a heck of an opportunity. I'm Still thankful for this day, but today I'm going to give you four things that I hated about junior college basketball. Things that I would wish I could change. Things that if I could tell you right now, if you know ahead of time, you can you can remedy those problems. You can avoid some of these pitfalls uh, before you actually get there. So there's one thing, and, and knowing the knowing some of the the, the dark spots of junior college basketball, and there's another, and, and, and knowing it and being able to adjust before you get there. Because if you if you didn't know this, if I didn't tell you this in this video, then you would, would undoubtedly fall in these same potholes that many of us fall in. But today I'm gonna give you that for the free, four things I hated about junior college basketball. Number one, the first thing I hated about playing junior college basketball is I felt like there wasn't enough attention to detail as it relates to grades. Don't get me wrong, I was able to register my first year, um, I was able to register my first year and play the next two years. So I got my associate's degree, but yet and still, I don't think I took classes that actually helped me go to a four-year institution. And if I had that in, in, in mind, then I would have taken classes that would have trans, transferred a lot more. Like once I got everything taken care of to get my associate's, I would have went back and been more tr strategic about taking core classes that could have helped me when I transferred, instead I was taking classes like yoga and garden and bull crap like that. Classes that were not going to be transferable. Classes that weren't going to help me uh, shorten my time once I did transfer to a four-year school. How you can remedy that problem is to kind of know that going into it. Don't rely on anyone to put you in those classes. Understand that if you want to go to a different uh, school, if you want to transfer to a four-year school, then you have to take some classes that's going to transfer with you. And you have to be strategic about knowing what classes those are. How do you do that? Figure out what you want to major in while you're in JUCO. And then and then you're in a better position before you get to the four-year school of knocking out some of those classes you're going to need, some of those prereqs you're going to need, some of those core classes you're going to need. You're going to be in a better position because you, you handled that stuff in JUCO instead of waiting until you got to a four-year school. And a lot of times, depending upon the school, I mean, it could depend upon whether it's a private school or a state school or so forth, or so on and so forth, if they're going to even take some of those credits. I've seen many times where uh, student athletes get themselves in a four-year university and a lot of those core classes, a lot of those things they thought was going to transfer over, don't transfer over, right? So that's more time, that's more money, that's more energy and patience you got to put back into that stuff. So kind of knowing that on the front end as a junior college player can help you on the back end when you actually go and transfer over to that four-year university. Number two, the second thing I didn't like about playing junior college basketball is I didn't like how selfish it was. Um, and, I, and I'm pointing the finger at myself. I'm not saying all junior college is selfish, but I think that basically you are putting some hungry, hungry mice, rats in an aquarium, and you're putting cheese in front of them. And all of them want that cheese. All of them want to potentially help themselves to go to a four-year university. Everybody wants to go to Division One. Everybody wants to shine. So. That's good in the sense that it cultivated a very competitive environment. So I love that part of it. But what I didn't like about it is I felt like more people were more uh, selfish about what 
they're trying to get theirs. And I fell into that pot myself. Uh, it, was little, it was little about uh, team morale and, and, and gelling as it was about I'm trying to get mine because I'm trying to get up out of here and, I, and I'm trying to go D1. So that's the part that I really didn't like. I didn't like how a lot of times it felt a lot more selfish than it needed to be, but I fell into that pot myself. And it's just the environment that it is because you get all these people that were overlooked. They were overlooked as far as going Division One or Division Two, II, Division Three, or a four-year university period. And they got a shot playing junior college. It's like a second chance. So if you get that second chance, you want to maximize that. You want to obliterate anything, that, anything or anybody else Anything or anybody in the way. So I understand why I can be selfish, but I don't. I didn't. I didn't like that. I didn't like how it just felt like it was a um, kill or be killed mentality. Even amongst your teammates, it felt like that a lot of times. The way you can remedy that is realizing that there's enough for everyone, right? Like there's going to be a lot more Division One scholarships than people on your team. And the the one thing I did learn about junior college and winning. Everybody wants a winner. So if your team wins, they're going to want more players off that team than if your team is losing and you just get all the stats yourself. If you average 50 points a game and y'all lose every game, there's going to be less to eat from that pie than it would be if you average five points a game and y'all won every game. Because people want winners off teams before they want losers off teams. Because if you score 50 points a game and y'all lose every game, you're still a loser. People will still look at you like a loser. So... Keep that in mind. That's how you can remedy that. The third thing I did not like about playing basketball during college is the resources. Now, this is not a blanket statement. Everybody doesn't have this. I went to uh, Eastern Utah. It's in Price, Utah, off Highway 7. It's called Utah State University Eastern now. But when I went, uh, the resources were, were subpar. Was subpar. I mean, they weren't the worst of the worst. I've been in the worst situations, but they weren't the best of the best either. And you run into a situation where sometimes your head coach or your assistant coach is, is in charge of being an athletic trainer as well as taping up your ankles when, uh, when you don't have someone on staff. You run into a situation where traveling around the country, your coaches are the ones that are driving the buses, driving the vans. Uh, because you don't have the, the resources that you could you could hire somebody that can take care of that. And people may think like, oh, that's no big deal. It's a big deal when your coach is upset because he lost or we lost. It's a big deal then, I assure you. It's a big deal when your coach is, is literally haven't slept, haven't slept and is weaving, right, <laughs> weaving in and out of traffic in the mountains of doggone Utah while it's snowing. It's a problem then. You're going to want some of those resources then. You're going to want – a, a designated bus, bus driver that is their job to get rest and be ready to drive on the road. All right? you, you're going to want those resources then. Um, and then other resources other resources as well, as far as like academic resources as it relates to tutors and, and things like that. Like We just didn't have that at the junior college level. Now, now don't, don't get me wrong. Some people did have that. We didn't have that. And I feel like that if there's some things I could change about my experience Having more resources as it relates to academics, having more resources as it relates to athletics, having more resources as it relates to just things to do, I think it would have been a lot more impactful for a lot of us as it relates to getting the best out of that opportunity we could. Now, what can you do to fix that? Resources, if you know that stuff on the front end before you sign to go to a school, then you're in a, be you're in a better position. But if that's all you got, then that's all you got. If that's all you can you get as far as uh, junior college, then that's all you can get. Me, myself, I didn't have people knocking down my door saying, hey, we want Bill on our team when I came out of high school. I was a decent player, six foot four, six foot five, with the right shoes on, ran the floor, got rebounds, the occasional dunks, blocked shots, that kind of stuff. I came a down a dozen. I was, I was undersized for the position that I played. So I didn't have the... I didn't have the, the the luxury of picking wherever I wanted to go. The only reason I had the opportunity to go to that school is because I had a guy that was six foot eight, Chris Anderson. He went to Wyoming before I got to Eastern Utah. He went to before I got to Eastern Utah. He played at Eastern Utah. And then he went on to go to Wyoming. He did really well at Eastern Utah. They gave me a shot. I registered my first year. Walked on. Uh, had to pay my way. Then every year after that, I got to pay for it. So that's the only reason I had that opportunity. It wasn't because I was just like some stud. I was just amazing. But I worked my way in there. I worked really hard. And I, and I was rewarded with a full ride scholarship those years after my red shirt walk-on year uh, at Eastern Utah. But as far as resources, going back to resources, 
just kind of know beforehand. Know beforehand what you're getting yourself into. That, know what you're getting into beforehand is the only uh, thing I can give you to as far as remedy that one. And my last one is this. My fourth thing that I wish, uh, my fourth thing that I hated about junior college basketball, uh, and if I could change that, it would be my mindset. I didn't like the mindset and believe it. Because before I got to junior college basketball, I had this mindset. Maybe some of you have this mindset as well. Is if you work hard, then you'll start. If you work hard, stay in gym, first one to get in there, last one to leave, go on the weight room. You, you're out you're there doing drugs. You're out there drinking and smoking and, and going to parties. And then that will translate into you being the star or whatnot. That sounds good. That sells t-shirts, that sells doggone shoes and commercials and all that stuff because you hear all your favorite your favorite uh, NBA or NFL or wh whomever say that, the favorite players. So Because you hear a lot of your favorite athletes say that. Oh, I was the first one in the gym, last one to leave. So you think that that's what it's going to take to get where you, know, you want to go. And yes, it will, but it, it doesn't guarantee that. I know guys. I played against guys. I played with guys that smoked weed and drank and all that stuff before the game and will give you 40 by halftime. You couldn't beat those people with a stick to get in the gym and work hard outside of practice we've already had. But when you turned them lights on, they was ready to go. And you got to understand that these people do exist. They're around here. They're in abundance. Now, am I trying to tell you that that's what you should do? No, I'm not trying to tell you that you should go out there and smoke, drink, not go to class. I'm not trying to tell you all that stuff. But what I am trying to tell you, or what I am telling you is, just because you don't do that, that doesn't mean the game owes you anything. So if you're sitting on your hands thinking, oh, well, my time's coming, your behind going to be sitting there. And you're going, to miss on, you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. You still got to go get it. Whether you go drink or not, whether you go smoke or not, whether you go party or not, you still got to go get it, just like everybody else. And... Don't feel like it's owed to you just because you're fighting a good fight, just because you're you're, you're not doing those things that you know uh, you're gonna. It's gonna come back and it, now you're gonna be the star. And that's just not how it works. And uh, and that's how I thought about it in high school. I thought because I didn't go to, I mean, I didn't go to one college party, not not a one, uh, because I didn't smoke, because I didn't drink. I felt that it was just a patience game. It was just a me waiting around and my opportunity was going to going to happen. Now, I'm telling you, it does not work like that, okay? It can work like that, but most often times, it doesn't. Because at the end of the day, it's about who can put the ball in the hole more efficiently. That's it. And 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 to be honest, I feel like, I mean, I, I got into this with, um, I've talked about this in some of my other videos, but not to make excuses, but I really feel like my coach had a preference for the type of player that he wanted. Like, my play, my coach came from a troubled past. Um, my coach used to talk to us about his his turbulent past as a, as, a, as a young student athlete and people that helped him. People that helped him uh, even though he was a little rough around the edges. And I think in a certain kind of way, he felt as though that it was his way of giving back to um, basketball since basketball – has given him so much when he was kind of rough around the edges. So these guys that he literally had to beat with the stick to go to class, chase them, weed in hand, smoking or drinking, those people he kind of gravitated towards. He was like the second chance person. He was the the white coach Carter. Like he wanted, he wanted to help those people. And my thing is, the thing that bugged me is I wish you would just put that same kind of effort into those individuals that already had their crap together. Like, why, why chase this person to value an education, to value an opportunity when you have someone here that is begging you to play, who's getting to the gym early, who's staying late, who's watching film, who's coming to talk to you? Like, I don't get it. But for whatever reason, um, that, that played a factor. And that's no excuse. Don't let, don't let me make this seem like it's an excuse. I played, you know, I got quite a bit of playing time, but I definitely felt like it was a preference uh, to, to trying to build individuals. And, and there's, there's something to be said about that. That's noble in that sense as well. Because some people come from environments where that's their only shot. And my whole thing is, if that's your only shot, then you should act like it. But so how do you how do you remedy that? How do you remedy that mindset? You just listen to this and reverse your mindset now.
Understand that the game doesn't owe you anything. Understand that just because you don't drink, you don't party, you don't smoke, all that stuff, that it doesn't owe you anything. You still got to put in your work, and it still comes around. Sometimes it's a lucky break. Sometimes it's you fitting that offense, fitting that defense, fit, fitting that coaching uh, philosophy. It, it's a lot of other variables, and you're just working hard. And I don't want you to be sitting back thinking that just because you worked hard, something's owed to you. Nothing's owed to you. Nothing's owed to you at all. You're wasting your time thinking somebody owes you something. They don't owe you anything. So these are four things that I wish, so these are the four things that I hated about going junior college basketball, playing junior college basketball, but I also gave you things that can remedy those problems so you know ahead of time so you can fix it before you, uh, before you actually go through it and, and kind of just learn from my situation.